Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to be looking at the graph editor viewport and F curves to really dial in your keyframe movement. If you haven't watched my video on the timeline and keyframing, you should go check that one out. And also, you might want to check out the video on the dope sheet before moving forward with this video. Now that we know how to create keyframes and how to get around the timeline and dope sheet, let's take a look at the next level of controlling our objects. So let's start with an example. Taking our default cube, we're going to set a couple of keyframes. I'm also going to set the preview range around this animation by using Ctrl Alt P in my timeline window. When I play this animation, you'll see that the cube moves slowly at first, speeds up, and then slows down as it approaches the next keyframe. This is because keyframes work by setting values at given frames, but the motion between those two frames is not hard-coded. Rather, it's interpolated between the two values using a function. This function is embodied in something called an f-curve, which, from the best of my knowledge, means a function curve, but I can't find definitive proof on that even after asking the developers. Now, we can edit this curve in the graph editor. So let's change our timeline to a graph editor and check it out. We can pan our graph editor around by pressing and holding our middle mouse button. We can zoom horizontally or vertically by holding down control, pressing our middle mouse button, and moving our mouse up and down or left and right. As you can see right off, the graph editor shares some things in common with the dope sheet and the timeline. The selected objects with keyframes are listed in the left panel with expandable lists of their keyed channels. The main difference is that instead of each channel having a row in the editor, each channel is now represented by a curve. You can see each point where there is a keyframe, and each of these points has a curve editing handle on it. The calculation of where to move the object is based on this curve. Let's add a third keyframe so we can see what's happening even clearer. To do that, I'm going to select our first keyframe, hit Shift D to duplicate it, and move it over to frame 120. I'll hit Ctrl Alt P again to expand my preview. By default, keyframes use Bezier interpolation. In this mode, you can make any curve you like using the handles. So if I click on a keyframe, I can grab and manipulate the handle. The numbers across the top represent the current frame, and the numbers running down the side represent what value that object should be at for that channel. So in this case, when I get to frame 60, my X location represented by this curve, should be at value 5. And as we see, by frame 10, the increase happens very rapidly, and then by frame 30, it starts to slow down. If I wanted the x value to go past the value at frame 60 and then come back, I could simply raise this up higher. Now at frame 50, the value is going to be 5.5, and, and then it will return back down to 5 by frame 60. Now we don't have to use Bezier interpolation. We can choose a different kind. To do that, we'll choose our first keyframe and go to the key menu. Choose interpolation mode and set it to constant. Constant mode will keep a keyframe's value exactly the same until the point of the next keyframe, when it will immediately jump to the next value. So if I play this animation, you'll see the box doesn't move until it hits frame 60. The next mode is linear. Linear is simply a straight line from point A to point B, so there won't be any acceleration or deceleration in the animation. It will go at a constant rate between the two keyframes. The next interpolation mode is Bezier. We've already seen that one. The next row of interpolation modes are the easing types. These are a list of ever-increasing intensity curves. I'm going to use the T key 
to bring up the interpolation mode menu, as you can see by its entry in the menu here. Each one of these modes makes the curve more dramatic. Finally, the dynamic effects interpolation modes are specialty modes which allow you to do an overshoot, a bounce, and elastic. By default, each keyframe is set to automatic easing. Easing is a setting where the curve Easing is a setting where a curve starts slow or fast. A curve can ease in, ease out, or both. The easing types can be set under the key menu. When a keyframe is set to automatic easing, this will not affect the first 3 modes. Automatic easing affects these this middle column by doing an ease in. This means that they'll start slowly and then speed up. Whereas the dynamic mode are ease out in automatic. They start quickly and then slow down as they end. However, you can go ahead and change the easing mode for any of these. For instance, if I choose a quintic mode, you'll see that it starts very slowly and then accelerates because the mode is set to automatic. If I choose the easing type to ease out, you'll see that it starts fast and slows down. It's basically the opposite curve. I could also set the easing type to ease in and out, and now it will ease in, speed up very quickly, and then ease out. I can always return this to automatic to get it back to the way it normally is. As you've seen so far, we've just been changing the first keyframe. What this means is that every keyframe along our curve can have a different interpolation and easing setting. So this first keyframe could have Quintic ease in, and the second keyframe could have Cubic ease out. Or my second one could be automatic bounce. What happens to a curve before and after the keyed frames are special cases, because we don't have information on where the curve is supposed to go. Because of this, we need to extrapolate this data. Extrapolation is figuring out what to do based on other data, but not having additional data to go on. By default, the curve enters the first keyframe flat, as you can see here, and then exits the last keyframe flat. This is called constant extrapolation mode. If I were to change the value of my first keyframe by clicking on it and pressing G and moving it up, you'll see that that incoming line stays constant. We can change this mode under the channel menu, extrapolation mode. Linear extrapolation tries to decide an incoming path based on the curve. We can change this angle by changing the endpoint of our curve. The next extrapolation mode is Make Cyclic, F modifier. This mode works especially well if our first and last keyframes are the same value. Cyclic simply repeats our cycle over and over and over again. Finally, under the extrapolation mode, Clear Cyclic simply removes this cyclic effect and is not an extrapolation mode in and of itself. While Cyclic is placed with the extrapolation types, it is different because it introduces us to something called F modifiers. These are modifiers just like our object modifiers, except instead of modifying a 3D object, they modify a 2D curve. So with our channel selected, let's go ahead and press N to open our side panel. In this panel, you'll see the settings for the current F-curve and the settings for the active selected keyframe. So if I choose this keyframe, you'll see that the interpolation is set to bounce with automatic easing 
Its keyframe is frame 60 and its value is 4.97. Let's click on the modifiers tab. You will see our cycles modifier that we added and some additional settings. The cyclic modifier actually has more settings than the make cyclic will give you. So you can come in here and choose how much you want to repeat your motion before and after your modifier. You can also remove this cycles modifier by clicking the X button. There are a lot of other modifiers we can add. A generator modifier is a mathematical function to generate polynomial graphs. With this, you can do all sorts of parabolic shapes. The built-in function allows us to access trigonometric functions like sine and cosine, square roots or logarithms. But not only will it generate a sine wave, by clicking the additive button, we can add this sine wave to our existing F-curve. The envelope and limit modifiers are used to restrict high and low values. We've already taken a look at the cycles modifier. The noise modifier will, as its name implies, add noise to your curve. Using the strength, the scale, the phase, and other settings, you can really get the look you're going for, whether that's extremely shaky or just a little bit of jitter. Finally, the stepped interpolation will create a stair-step type evaluation of your curve based on a step size. This will give you an effect like the constant interpolation mode, except it will happen in between our keyframes instead of just at our keyframes. These modifiers, of course, can be stacked together. I'm going to quickly add some keyframes in other directions. When our keyframes start to become more complicated like this, sometimes we need to narrow down to just work on one particular keyframe. You can use the eyeball icon next to a keyframe to show or hide that keyframe. If you have a key, if you have an F-curve with modifiers on it, and you want to disable just the modifiers for a moment, click the wrench icon on that channel. That will disable any modifiers on that channel until you click it again. You can of course disable that channel by unchecking the checkbox, or you can prevent further edits to that channel by clicking the lock. You'll see that when you do that, that channel's line becomes dotted. One last item to note is this button marked Normalize. When you're editing multiple curves like this with really different heights, say this Y location, instead of being at 10, was at 80. It becomes difficult to see that value and these values down here. And if this gets too high, these small values can be impossible to work with. In order to deal with this, we can press the Normalize button. Normalize temporarily maps all of the curves from values of negative 1 to 1. So the lowest value on each curve becomes negative 1 and the highest value becomes 1. Now it becomes very easy to grab all of the values at say frame 60 and slide them over without having to scale way out to see all of them and maybe miss one of them. When I'm ready to return them to their normal values, I can just uncheck the normalize button and everything will go back to the way it should be. I hope this intro to the graph editor has been helpful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Johnny Gizmo. As always, thanks for taking time out of your day to watch my video. I hope it inspired you to do something awesome. I'll see you next time.